All right, so if you're someone like me who went in and grabbed the uh, Windows 8 developer preview last night and hurried up and installed it just to see what it would be like, you probably logged in and was like, wow, this looks great, you know, this would be great on a tablet, and then thought, hey, this is a little bit annoying to use with a keyboard and mouse. Well, to sort of get around that, it's, you know, it's not a complete fix, but to sort of get around this, uh, there's a couple things you can do to actually make your desktop look like this. This is Windows 8 right here. It, uh, you know, it looks like Windows 7, but it's Windows 8, and I can show you because I know a whole bunch of comments on the video are going to be like, oh, fake and gay, and while it is Metro, it's probably not really fair to call it gay. So anyway, um, so here we, here we have it. It's the Windows uh, developer preview. I'm going to go ahead and restart this just to get it back to the state that uh, you guys probably have it at, and I'll show you how to get it looking like that. And while this reboots, this is running in VirtualBox, if you're wondering how I'm recording it. And uh, in case you're wondering, VirtualBox, it works. It's a little bit laggy on the video side, but it actually works pretty well, so just as an FYI. All right, so here we are on the lock screen. I'll go ahead and unlock that, type in my password. And uh, here, we go. here we are back on the Metro start screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to desktop, and we've got, again, that's sort of that... Uh, sort of quirky start button over here and when you click on it it just jumps you in here and if you want to go somewhere you can either move all the way over with your keyboard or type the name of what you're looking for and the off chance it's here you have to type in Chrome because it's not in the list it sounds like Netscape's issues but anyway and then uh, or you can use the little horizontal scrolly thing over here which just seems annoying to me uh, almost as annoying as VirtualBox screwing up the mouse like that Okay, so let's just sort of dive back into the desktop real quick. And so in order to do this, it's actually really, really easy to do. It doesn't require really much of anything. Just go over to uh, C colon Windows uh, System32. And the file you're looking for is shsx.dll. Uh, so shsxs. DLL. I, I guess it's the shell for the Windows SXS system. Um, still trying to figure out how this all works. But anyway, basically you want to get this file and you want to rename it to something so that Windows doesn't recognize it anymore. Uh, so I'm just going to rename it to backup. You could delete it, but then you wouldn't be able to uh, get back to the way it was. So And there's there are some problems that you get when you switch around, so I'll show you that in a minute. So all you do is rename that, and then just go back over to, into your start menu and reboot. Okay. And I'll just let this restart real quick. All right, and just log back in as usual. And so now, when you log in, you're actually taken directly over to the Windows desktop. And as you can see, it I mean, it looks like Windows 7. It's, it's of course, Windows 8. But uh, the performance is much better. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty great. Um, there's, there's a few kind of weird things. Unless you pin something to your start menu, like I had that pinned, the recent things don't pop up for whatever reason and when I try to enable, let's see, whenever I try to enable recent items it just doesn't seem to work. That might be something weird that I changed earlier when trying to hack this but uh, try that out see what happens. Um, that gives you the start menu back and you can of course type you know notepad for example if you want to open up that and it works just the way it would on Windows 7 or Windows Vista. And, uh, of course, you've got all the good stuff over here. So, I mean, that's pretty great. Uh, of course, Start Key still works and all that. But there are a few problems with this. Namely, you can't run any more uh, immersive applications anymore. Uh, so, for example, if I go over and click on Store, absolutely nothing happens. If I go over and try to run an application, which, ironically enough, are over here in Program Files in a folder called Applications, that... Uh, natively you can't open but if you use a take own command it basically just gives you privileges to the whole thing and you can go in here and you can see you can see the applications in here but if you try to run any of them some of them you can run but they won't work uh, the HTML ones especially you can 
you can open them up but they just don't work right uh, or do anything at all and the uh, the exe ones actually just won't let you run them without being in an app container um, for example uh, zero gravity I don't know why VirtualBox keeps doing that I'm sorry um, zero gravity for example mm -hmm. oh, uh, If you run the exe file, it just it says it's got to be run in an app container and doesn't work. And uh, if you try to do this, it just, again, it doesn't work. Because it's trying to get, basically from what I can tell, it's trying to get to the Win32 APIs, and those just aren't being hosted by the uh, standard Internet Explorer. So hopefully I can figure out what the app container is and be able to fix that problem. But there are some other, there are probably going to be some security problems that pop up with that too. So anyway, and of course if you want to go back, you can just head over to Windows System32 and uh, go back to that file we had earlier. Uh, I'll just search for backup. And, uh, and then just rename it over to the original file and reboot your computer. And it'll boot up right in the uh, uh, immersive settings. So um, anyway, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the video. I'll be happy to reply to them. And um, again, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. Um, this is pretty much the only way I've found so far to get rid of it. I'm sure there are several other ways to turn off Metro that I just haven't found yet. So um, just keep your eyes open, and if you discover anything else, let me know in the video, and I'll be sure to uh, give people a heads up. All right, thanks for watching.